Treehouse Book 52, Soccer on Sunday, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter 9, Go! So now, we, we can just be our own slabs again, said Roboto, panting. There were no signs of the soccer kids. As Jack looked around, he saw a newspaper stand and an outdoor calf. Hey, are you guys as hungry as I and as thirsty as I am? he asked. Yes, and he and Roboto sat together. Jack pulled some pistols out of his backpack. How are we doing here? he said. He showed his money to Roboto. Do we have enough tackles and buses there too? Roboto nodded. Perfect, said Jack. Let's grab a bite, then Annie and I have to find a big banquet in the city. Really? Do you need to wash up first? asked Roboto. Oh yeah. Jack sighed as he looked at his mud splattered clothes. Let's worry about that after we eat, said Annie. The three of them stood up and headed inside the cab. The heavy set woman with brown skin and gray hair was frying food behind a counter. A couple of teenagers were putting coins into a jukebox. Loud no loud music started to play. Three taco plates and three lemonade plates, Roboto said to the woman behind the counter. She nodded and put food onto three plates. Then she brought the plates to a table and set them down. Soon she delivered Three tall glasses of pink lemonade. Jack and you were bottled, dug hungrily into their food. Jack gobbled up tickles, filled with tomatoes, chilies, and cheese. He ate a big serving of black beans and yellow rice and gulped down his lemonade. Roboto, you scored lots of goals today, and he said, her mouth full. Yeah, your feet move like lightning, said Jack. Roboto laughed. You made me look like good. You passed the ball to me every chance you got. That's called teamwork, said Annie. Yes, it is, said Jack. Someone called us the beautiful team. Right, said Annie. She raised her arms above her head. Yay, beautiful team, she explained. Roboto laughed. You have a good influenza for soccer, Jack and Annie, he said. Influenza is everything. Jack smiled. Right now, I have influenza for eating this food, he said. Me too, it's so good, said Annie, taking another bite of rice and beef. Hey Jack, where did you get that ring? Asked Roboto. It looks like it's on fire. What? Jack and Annie said together. They both stuck at a ring on Jack's finger. It was glowing with light. Oh man, it was for Jack. Annie's eyes grew huge. What were we just talking about? She asked. A uh, good food? said Jack. Jack's bicycle kick, said Roboto. The beautiful team, said Annie. Influenza, said Roboto. I said, influenza is everything. Suddenly, the wind exploded with light. That's it, cried Jack. Influenza is everything, said Annie. Roboto, I think you just said something true and and great, said Jack. But it wasn't me who first said it, said Pilly. Sir Roboto, Pilly said it. Pilly said that, said Jack. Yes, my father read it in the newspaper, Sir Roboto. Pilly said the you play soccer, and swear them is everything. Okay, that's it. We just accomplished our mission, said Annie. We can go to Camelot now, said Jack. They both shot their arms in the air and shouted, Go! What mission? Where's Camelot? asked Roboto. He got confused. It's a long story, said Jack. Just know that you have helped us discover a really important secret of greatness from the knee, said Annie. Thank you. Roboto smiled. You're welcome, he said. But then the smile of his face. I'm happy, but I'm sad too, he said. Why are you sad? asked Annie. Today was a magical day, said Roboto. But it will never happen again. I'll never be a great soccer player again. Yes, you can be a great soccer player again, Annie said. You have lots of influenza. That's all I have, said Roboto. I'm clumsy. I don't run fast or kick well. Before today, I never scored even one goal. 
Roboto. This is really important. Say, so Annie, if you want to be a great player or great at anything, Jack broke it. Right. If you want to be great at a anything, there are four secrets you need to know, say, so Annie. Right, said so Jack. First, you need to have humility. That means you have to be willing to learn from others. Roboto has that, say, so Annie. Absolutely you have that. Jack said to Roboto. Second, being great takes hard work. Do you hard work at practice soccer? Annie asked Roboto. Well, no, said Roboto. I don't either, said Jack. Okay, so we should both start practicing more. Third, you need to have meaning and purpose in your life, said Annie. Roboto phoned. What does that mean? He said. That means you try to do something that's good for the world. Oh, and not just for yourself, Annie. Oh, so Roboto, or well, soccer does that. It brings people together from different neighborhoods. And today, I brought people together from all over the world in the stadium. And I brought the three of us together, so Annie. Good, said Jack. And finally, enthusiasm. And enthusiasm is something we know you have. Yes, so Roboto, smiling again. He sat back in his seat. So I know this thing I must do. I must start to practice very hard. My brother and sister will help me with that. Oh, oh no. He jumped up from his chair. What's wrong? said Annie. I must go now. Roberto said. I forgot all about my family. Everyone will be waiting to hear my stories about the game. All right. We have to go too, said Annie. Standing up Jack, Jack looked at their bill and a bunch of pistols on the table. And then they all headed out to cast. The rain had let up and there was a streamy mess in the air. Where is the banquet you must find? The robot. Oh, we don't have to go there anymore, said Jack. Our mission is done. We just need to get back to the U.S. Embassy. No problem, Sir Roboto. The bus goes us to Insurgent Station, very near the Embassy. We can, we can all get off there. Then I'll catch a metro to my neighborhood. Come on, he led Jack and Annie across a ransom lot. Then they started up a dirt road and with small stucco houses. Run, there it is, run, Roboto said. An old box was right on up the road. Jack and Annie ran with Roboto to the corner. Out of breath, they got to the bus stop just in time. The doors of the bus opened, and the three of them hopped up. Metro insurgents, please, Jack said to the driver. They paid for three fares. Then, even though there were plenty of seats, Jack and Annie Roboto squeezed into a two seater so they could all sit together. As the bus wandered through the outskirts of the Mexico City, Jack leaned his head against the window. Still, he closed his eyes. Next thing he knew, he was back in the game, kicking the ball forward, backward and sideways, jumping into the air, lobbing the ball past the fenders, and, and past the goalie, and into the net. Jack had the trough the hub off his head while the crowd roared. Wake up, kids, we're here, announced the bus driver. Jack opened his eyes. The bus driver was standing over them. They had fallen asleep on the long ride back to the city. And gently shook her bottle's shoulder, shoulder, waking him. He sat up straight. It's our stop, Roboto, she said. Oh, oh, he said. Jack and Roboto scrambled out of their seats. They jumped off the bus and stood together on the plaza of matter insurgents. Do you know how to get to the embassy from here? Roboto asked. Sure, this one is there already, said Annie. Good, said Roboto. He shook hands with Annie, then Jack. Thank you, Annie and Jack, he said formally. Thank you for everything. And thank you for everything, Roboto, said Jack. Happy birthday forever, said Annie. Roboto flashed his beautiful smile. He waved and then turned a hurry into the metro station. What a great gate, said Jack. Yeah, I wish he'd live in Frog Creek, said Annie. Me too, said Jack. Well, ready? Yep, said Annie. Onward to Camelot. It was dark when Jack and Annie headed up Clarence Avenue. They passed the Andrew and then ran down the street to the U.S. Embassy. The Embassy guards were quiet. There was no sign of the guards on the dirty. I hope Danny got to see the game on TV, said Annie. I would have to see the game someday. 
Jack's Jack. I bet there's a way to see it back home on the computer or on a DVD. Hey, you really can see anything from the bottom seat, can you? Say Annie. Jack shook his head. You're a good person, Jack. Say Annie. Before Jack could say he wasn't that good, Ben stepped out of the bed seat. Hey, ya!、Uh, are you just getting back from the game? He asked. Yep, said Jack. Did you have a good time? Asked Benny. Yes, said Annie. And you know what? Said Jack. Think about running around the soccer field with Annie and Roberto. It was the game of a lifetime. It sure was. I got to see some of it on TV. Said Benny. I'm headed home now. Night. Good night. Said Annie. She and Jack stood on the lawn of the embassy until Benny had disappeared down the city sidewalk. Pronto, said Annie. Jack and Annie hurried to the rope ladder hidden in the trees. They climbed up into the magic treehouse and looked out the window together. A fairy waterfall of green and yellow stars were perched above the jack skyline of Mexico City. Was whistling and popping sound, the fireworks celebrating the game of a lifetime. Goodbye, Mexico," said Jack. "Goodbye, Billy," said Annie. "Good luck, Roberto," said Jack. As the fireworks kept exploding, Jack pulled out his pencil and notebook, knelt down onto the floor, and added the four secrets of greatness to their list. And so it was. Good," said Annie. "Let's take our list to Camelot now." She picked up the score laying on the floor and brought it to the word Camelot in Merlin's note. "I wish we could go there," she whispered. "A blast of night, a roar of wind, and a rumble of thunder." And they were there.